Mugello time. Mugello time. Mugello time. Mugello time. Mugello time. This is the card, this is the track, and this is somebody deep throating a microphone against their will. It's pretty rough. Mm. First race of the video, it's going to be 13 laps of Mugello. We are starting on P2 as car number three behind Jay Wong and in front of Joey. So we're uh, right in between the Jays. And let's get underway, trying my new launch. I'm not good at it yet, but I promise it's gonna get there. It's already better than my old launch, uh, but it's, it's still not great. We are gonna lose a position to Joey. Car number six creeping up behind here, but uh, not close enough to really put us under any threat there. So for the most part, we're going to be safe here. Joey potentially looking around the outside to take the lead early on, but it looks like Jay Wong lets his car drift out a little bit wide to defend there. Joey's going to slot back in behind as we go through the first chicane. And this will end up putting us in our favorite position, which is not necessarily P3, but just directly behind a battle. I love being behind battles. Now, by the time we get through the second chicane and we're heading down the hill at Mugello, you can already see that the group is starting to split up behind uh, Calvin, who's in P4. So from Calvin to P5, there's a bit of a gap, and that gap would just kind of continue to open. So we, we have our own little island here of four people at the moment looking to uh, battle for the lead. Joey goes off track there. We follow him off track. He then kind of teases a move up the inside into the chicane, like the middle chicane of the track. I'm not quite sure what to call that. I think that gets in Jay Wong's head slightly as he loses a bit of time. Uh, Joey obviously is going to lose a bit of time for taking that line on entry, and that'll keep us even closer. Not that we need to be any closer, uh, but here we are right behind Joey now as he goes a bit deep through turn 12, I think that is, through the final chicane uh, or the penultimate corner which is the final chicane i suppose and we all make it through there just fine about half of a second behind jay right behind joey we should have a ton of slipstream and uh, jay it looks like going extremely deep through the final corner this would kind of prove to be his weakest point on the track i think and you'll see it continuously throughout the video we get a pretty solid run there so we are now only three tenths behind jay crossing onto lap number two and look at this we've kind of dropped calvin in p4 looking like more of a three-way battle for the lead joey makes slight contact going around the outside of jay towards the first corner i'm gonna back off i don't want to murder myself or either of these guys i'm in a fine position here we have lots of the race left no rush uh, jay manages to make that work on the inside as joey goes a bit deep through the first corner a lot deeper than i think he needed to he probably assumed that jay was going to send it a bit deeper there uh, in a in an attempt to defend but didn't quite happen we kind of look up the inside or the outside of joey there as we got a good run out of that first chicane but end up backing out and staying in our little line all of this fighting is slowly bringing calvin closer and closer he's now within half of a second behind us my worst part of the track right here, down this hill after the second chicane and this left-hander, I've seemed to lose about a tenth or two every single race to Jay and Joey, or every single lap to Jay and Joey, um, but I do feel like I kind of make it up through these next couple of corners. Skipping ahead to the final chicane penultimate corner, I don't know what the, I mean, I need to find out the corner number of that, but we're going to hop on board with Jay, who, as he makes his way around the final corner for the second time, basically the exact same thing goes extremely deep but watch the relative here as calvin just completely drops off and we'll take a look at what exactly happened to him it looks like he just kind of sent it in with too much too much heat behind it not enough braking and then tried to get the angle while maintaining too much speed which will spin you off like that uh okay so taking a peek up ahead joey is now right on the tail of jay we're a bit further back not really i mean we have no no part in this fight at the moment this is strictly between them two which is fine i'm breaking very early to uh make sure that i don't get involved too much and just see how it pans out maybe be able to react to something if something goes down looks like similar thing to what happened on the last lap joey goes a bit deep and then tucks behind a good line by jay though he got his braking nicely done on the inside got it stopped perfectly at the apex and turned very early which can be difficult to do by the time lap number eight comes around this is through like that middle chicane me and joey chasing down jay and uh, joey has fallen off of jay slightly at this point and i'm not going to say too much but i will say that joey may have been uh slurping some juice at this point of the day so i was surprised that he was keeping up as well as he was uh with jay in the beginning of this race he does start to fall off of the pace just slightly here as he this is also like his first race on this track 
and he is under the influence of slurp juice. So there's there's multiple factors there uh, dedicating to his. I mean, honestly, it's not even really a lack of pace. He's basically the exact same pace. So I just have the slipstream, and I am able to move up the inside. And Joey actually. He's just going to let us go. I think the side effects of the juice were kicking in at this point, so he wasn't totally confident in uh, his ability at the moment and throughout the rest of this race. So he's just going to settle back and kind of chill. Like, he really just chills. He's, he's got 14 seconds to the car behind him, so he's basically on track uh, by himself at this point. Now, Jay is two seconds ahead of us. We have, what, we have four laps left to go, so... Time is beginning to crunch, and if I want any opportunity of catching Jay, I really can't afford to make any more mistakes. Jay was an extremely consistent driver more than anything else. Uh, those little moments on turn one that I showed, that was really like the only fault I saw with him. Somebody is parked on the side of the track here, car number 18, not sure what's going on there, so we'll sweep past him. Fortunately, not getting caught up in anything there, which kind of sucks. I mean, at this point, seeing a lapped car like that creep like creep up on Jay gets me excited because there's potential there, you know, for the lapped car to hold up Jay, potentially make my job a lot easier of catching Jay. And uh, that wasn't to happen right here, but it wouldn't be the only time it would happen this race. Now, Jay has gotten a lot better at his exit through turn one, but uh, on this occasion specifically, he gets a little bit of a slide, which doesn't seem like much, but we actually gain about three tenths through the corner and we now have a better run so we are going to be gaining time all of the way down the straight as we cross onto lap number 10 so we have 10 11 12 13 four laps to go at this point 1.3 seconds to close definitely possible once we get into that slipstream of about like 0.9 seconds that's when you really start to feel it and uh if i could get to that point by the next lap then potentially it could help me close up on I don't know, two tenths just on the straight alone, which would be extremely helpful as I do think I was slightly faster when mastering my pace, but it wasn't gonna be enough to close up this gap purely based off of my pace. I definitely needed the slipstream to help me. 1.3 seconds as we get about halfway through the track and it would kind of stay there for about a lap. So skipping ahead to lap number 11 and the gap is just about the exact same. Jay is about to change that though as he breaks way too little, way too late, going very deep here, not going to be able to open up his exit at all. You can see our car, we kind of stay in the middle of that chicane and uh, we're able to gain a lot of time on it there, actually about six tenths just from that, which I mean, it doesn't look like a big mistake when you see it from that outside perspective, but in the car and looking at the relative, you can see the time fly down. So two laps left to go. We are now in the slipstream, finally. This should help us out a lot down the straight if we could maintain the similar gap here. We just need a good run here. If we could even get a better run than him through the final corner, that could aid us more, obviously. Uh, and it looks like he's going a bit deep per, uh, per usual for him. So we get a really good exit. He actually gains about a tenth because he goes deep, carries a lot more speed in, but he has to slow down the car later in the corner uh, and it basically makes his exit slower than mine so we are now six tenths behind him soaking up slipstream and uh, that should help us close up at least another tenth before we get into the first corner and taking a look at the relative here as we enter the first corner and you can see that there is a lapped car kyle who is 4.6 seconds up the road and rapidly closing so with this lap and another one left to go, I figured that that'll probably come into play at some point. At this point, it's already down to three points. It, it's sub four seconds at this point. You can see him right there going through the second chicane as we chase him down. Now, obviously, I don't want Kyle to, like, kill Jay, but if he could just, like, make a mistake trying to let Jay through and then it slows Jay down, or if it's just a, a, a poorly timed pass for Jay, which he doesn't really have much control over at this point, uh, it could help us out a lot. And... Kyle is falling back extremely fast. We're about to reach a pinch point. He's taking a narrow line for whatever reason, so he's not opening up this corner. He's on the racing line. Jay has to slow down here. I don't think he had to break, but he had to lift massively. And look at this. We are now directly behind Jay. We have to take a narrow entrance to the chicane, but it is okay. We are on his tail, a tenth behind him. If we could... I mean, we don't even necessarily need to hold this. We just need to stay about three tenths behind Jay, which is actually where we are now. So it's perfect. We're opening up this corner a bit more. However, 
break a little bit too lightly, go very deep here, and that opens up the gap slightly. However, Jay is anxious to get on the throttle, goes very deep through there, isn't able to open up his run through the chicane. I assume he probably had to do a little bit of lifting there. If not, then he definitely had to oversteer his car and probably scrubbed his tires a little bit, which will lose speed. So through the final corner, Jay following his line all of the way deep here. So both of us getting a very similar run through there. Not the best run, but the same for both of us, which will be in my favor as I do have the slipstream crossing onto the final lap. So we have an opportunity coming up here. The first corner of this track is by far the best overtaking opportunity, trying to kind of tease something around the outside. So he stays in the middle, move to the inside, and he kind of closes, he closes over there a little bit. It scares us, honestly, and I settle behind. We make very, very slight contact. It was good defense by him. He, there was space there for us to take. We decided not to take it, so he moved to the racing line. Good driving from him, and sadly, that's gonna make our job a lot harder now. Uh, if you're gonna make a move somewhere else on this track, it's gonna be aggressive. It's gonna probably be a little bit rough. That was definitely the best overtaking opportunity potentially here into this next chicane, but I'm not quite close enough. I could have gone for a dive. Maybe I should have, but I didn't. I actually over -break instead, lose about two tenths to him. And uh, now we're heading into my worst part of the track. Probably not gonna gain much time on him here. He's three tenths going into this corner. And as we exit the downhill left-hander, he's already gained a tenth. I send it a bit deep there as well. So I have to hesitate on to, or not a bit deep. I send it a bit quick into there, a bit hot. So I have to hesitate. And that's uh, gonna kind of screw me in the end. Coming up to the final corner, three tenths behind him. It's a lot to ask to gain three tenths through this corner and um, trying to really do something here. Look for a good exit, but I push it a bit too hard. Try and go deep, cut back early, and it just doesn't doesn't uh, doesn't end up in my favor. So a little bit of sliding from me, and yeah, that puts us totally off of him. Ooh, we messed up our opportunity. You know, all you can really do is learn from it. Try to be slightly more aggressive. Uh, the next go around crossing the line in p2 so not a bad result a very good result for us and we actually had some incident points to spare so i decided to take the road less traveled and the secret wormhole out of the track now taking a look at the results definitely wasn't the strongest lobby but jay is a very very good driver driver i enjoy driving against as well he, he's, he's very quick consistent and uh clean so a lot of fun racing him we did gain i rating red in the safety rating arena but honestly i think had we had we just parked it at the end that probably would have stayed green either way into the next race jay at the front we are all of the way back here in p11 and joey is actually right ahead of us here we both decided not to qualify uh to just see if we could fight our way through the field i was on stream when i did this so that's why i'm not qualifying typically i always qualify but Luckily, the person ahead of me, I think, disconnected before the race started, so we're going to get a free position there. Attempt our new launch. It's not great, but it's honestly okay. Joey is blinking in and out of existence in front of us. Car number 10 is looking around the outside of us, so potential to lose a position here. We are in P10 because we got that free position. Joey going up the inside. We were thinking about following him through, and I think car number 9 actually wanted to let us through, but uh, we don't take it, so he moves back in front of us. 10 settling behind, so we don't actually lose a position. Car number 9 is now side by side with the red car, and we are going to go up the inside into the chicane as he goes a bit deep there. So gaining one position now up into P9, following David Barrett, who would prove to be an absolutely terrifyingly, uh, well, a terrifyingly terrifying challenge for us as we come through the second chicane. We get a run vastly superior to his. Look up the inside, and he just starts moving over. It scares me a bit here. You can see from the outside perspective, as he realizes we're going to make that move, he just kind of moves over as we're there. So we have to back out, get onto the brakes, and then down the hill, he's going to get go really slow, just not ever necessarily get onto the throttle, and we've now lost about a second and a half to p7 and the gap is climbing constantly up the hill we're going to realize the situation we're in now not try and force a move quite yet unless we get something that is undeniably faster because this guy is a bit scary at the moment and if i were to get crashed out in this race i would lose about 300 i rating the, the strength of the field is about 1700 i rating and in case you don't know a uh, if you're a really high rating in a low rating lobby, you lose a lot more uh, than you typically would. We get a really good run heading towards the chicane, but he's going to move back over to the inside. Kind of expected that. You could hear me lift off the throttle early. And uh, another good run here, looking for a move that was never really there. I mean, we're two tires in the dirt. And at this point, 
I don't know if you can tell, but my brake lights are on and his are not. So I know that he is not making this corner because I already broke really late for that corner. Goodbye, David. Uh, I'm sure he was a bit preoccupied with the fact that we were basically attached to his quarter panel. And uh, as that happened, Shannon seemed to have gone into the dirt. So we are chasing down Shannon now, heading towards the beginning of lap two. And it looks like we're going to move up into P7 by the start of lap two. So we're what three position four positions up including that freebie we got at the beginning side by side with shannon we are on the outside he's going to immediately dive to the inside he's gonna make it work we're side by side all of the way through the first corner we have what is now the inside for the chicane and i much prefer the inside he goes a bit deep it's very easy to do that when you're on the outside but he then darts to the inside of this next chicane we do make slight contact and we're going to go side by side but i have the inside for the next one so a lot of side by side here and this will kind of tend to happen when you make a move into that first corner that the move doesn't really get settled until this point here so i think this is like five corners later and you'll see that actually a few times in this video where people battle all of the way through there quite a large gap uh, to P6, who is car number eight ahead of us, as we kind of got stuck behind that uh, red car for quite some time. Joey fighting through the field. Now he's up into P4, so that's the podium. Already within one lap, he is looking at the podium. We're still a bit behind him. We've got some time to make up, going a little bit into the dirt there as we absolutely, absolutely fling it through. The chicane, I absolutely love the chicane. You can take both of these sausage curbs a lot more than I just did right there uh, at full pace. And taking a look at the gap, we can see exactly the difference in our pace compared to Matthew's. So it's about four seconds as we enter this corner. Already, by the time we exit it, we've gained almost half of a second. Skipping ahead, basically like two full lap or one whole lap. So it's the beginning of lap number four now. One second behind Matthew, the gap. So we should be able to get this move done on this lap if we don't make any glaring errors and uh through the first corner already closing up some time to him a couple of tenths there i'm also keeping tabs on the cars ahead so jow's about 2.3 seconds joey has already caught the guy in p3 so he's about five seconds up the road but the guy in p3 is a he's a good driver so i'm expecting there to be some sort of battle there potentially holding joey and him back i think his name is cameron yes it is cameron best through the chicane and we are right on Matthew's tail now. Uh, it's going to be about getting around him safely. Like I said, if I were to fuck this up, we are losing a absolute dick load of IR, but he's going to move to the inside actually and slow down for us. So he lets us through, which is great. The safest way to get a position. Two seconds behind Zhao now, and uh, we have a, I'd, I'd say, pretty high chance of catching him at this point. We gained about half a second through that chicane, and my focus is now really beginning to settle on a podium position. So Joey is currently fighting for a podium. It looks like Calvin is right ahead of Cameron, but Jay is way up the road from him. So a win may be out of reach, but a podium is definitely not. Lap number five coming through that final chicane. It looks like this position is creeping up on us for sure. And in this type of situation, when you start from the middle or the back of the pack, I think it's really important to just be patient enough that you're not killing yourself or killing anybody else. Like, I'm not trying to put in my best laps every lap right now. I'm, I'm not really not. Uh, there's just too much at risk at the moment. And it's a good reminder to have a race like this every now and then that kind of forces you to take it a bit slower. Lap number six comes around and we are moving to the outside. We're going to try and ship a move. A lot of space between us, which isn't really optimal for either of us. It makes so that our lines potentially could crash. And I actually slow down a bit there. I was initially looking for a switchback because we had so much space between us. I was thinking maybe he would break late and go very deep, but he kind of gets the car stopped in the perfect place so that my switchback is basically useless. Had I just went to go around the outside, I think we definitely could have done it there because I think he's over slowed kind of at the apex of that corner. Now, as that battle was going down between myself and uh, Jao, Joey is dealing with somebody who potentially has the powers from the 2008 film with Hayden Christensen and Samuel Jackson Jumper as he is just bleeping in and out. I think there was contact there. Joey absolutely ships it unafraid of death. And then look at that. He, just, he, stopped, he stopped doing it, which it's just really weird to me that it's like as soon as he gets caught, that happens. And then once he gets past, it stops happening. 
Very weird, a bit suspicious. Somebody is off on the side of the track as we get a really good run on Zhao. So that was actually the guy in P2, Calvin. So we now move up to P5, actually stealing P4 now, moving through the chicane. So two positions as we kind of come to start sector two of the track, that downhill right hander, which I absolutely despise. And taking a look at the relative, about five seconds behind Cameron, who has been passed by Joey. Joey's been promoted into P2 as the previous P2 spun, and we are now looking at a potential podium. Though we are five seconds off of him currently, there's a lot of race left, and uh, I just had to pump out some solid laps. By the time lap number 11 came around, we had definitely done some damage to Cameron. We are now within two seconds of Cameron. So... A lot of work done, but a lot of work left to go, and we actually only have three laps, including this one, to get that one done. So we would need to be almost a second faster per lap. A uh, little bit of slide, though, out of the first chicane from Cameron is going to aid us quite a bit. We gained a couple of tenths there for free, closing the gap now to one and a half seconds. The gap to Joey is four seconds, so that one is basically unreachable at this point. Not really too focused on that. I think I would be happy with the podium. However, Joey has some plans to expedite our trip onto the podium as he comes up the very, very fast right-hander here. Just a little bit too much throttle, I assume. It looked like the apex was a bit far away from him. He's going to go spinning off of the track, and we will come flying through, picking up P3, so moving on to the podium. And uh, now the podium is not good enough for us. It is no longer good enough. We are one second behind Cameron. We have two laps to go after this one. Cameron, it looks like he's shifting his weight very extremely of his car, which either means his tires are feeling it or he's just playing out being overly aggressive with the steering and perhaps the braking as well. Whatever the case was, it has allowed me to gain some time and I'm hoping that that will continue to fall down as he pushes way too deep there, which is gonna make the chicane just ever so slightly harder for him and the compromise of like how deep he went and the time he gained from going deep there doesn't really make up for the time that he loses through that chicane. So we are within a second through the final corner. We don't have to have the best run through here. We have the slipstream. On top of it, it looks like he missed the apex by quite a margin, which isn't necessarily a bad thing there, but either way, we are in the slip, so we gained some time there. Lap number 12, this is the penultimate lap. We are within seven tenths now of him, and uh, look at that. Look at that. He's doing a little bit of that bleeping thing, so I, I, I don't know what that is. I don't even know if it's possible to like have a lag switch or whatever, but I mean, I don't think that's really what he had. It was just very suspicious how viciously it happened with Joey. I don't think it actually happens again for us. He's swerving by the time we get onto the straight to start the final lap, and we're half a second behind him. Not going to be able to make a move into this first corner, which is the best opportunity, as we said in the last race. So we're kind of in the same scenario now as we were last race, except instead of battling for the lead, we're battling for P2. He goes a bit deep through turn one. That's definitely going to help us out a little bit. And in reality, I need to get right onto his tail as quickly as I can because every single corner we go through right now is an opportunity that I am missing to make a move because I'm really just not close enough yet to do that. So I have to make something happen soon. I'm trying to break as lightly as possible, take as much of that inside curve, probably carry a bit too much speed in through there. Still manage to keep it on track, but I definitely have to fight the car for it. It's gonna shed some speed. However, it doesn't look like he had an amazing run through there either. This is where my edge just completely falls off. He's going to gain some time on us there. I definitely did not open it up nearly enough as I needed to on this lap. And uh, my tires are definitely feeling it. You can see me counter steering just about every single corner right now. Probably over driving the car a bit. I was, I was in my head really wanting to get this position. And I mean, we're still five tenths behind him. And we only have a few more corners left, so it's not looking great. We would need just about some type of miracle to happen or an ultra mega dive bomb through corner number 12. He takes a very interesting line through there. Definitely not the fastest way through that corner and still manages to go a bit deep there. So that gave me a little bit of confidence. We only have one more corner left. It's a Hail Mary at this point. We're right behind. We're going to stay to the inside, try and pin him there, move to the outside at the last second, going all of the way deep, trying to avoid the dirt, the counter steering, and he locks up on the inside of us as well. Ooh, a little bit of contact. We are off of the track, and it looks like we're going to exit side by side. That's right, baby. <laughs> we got it done in the last corner. <laughs> Let's go!
<laughs> Here is my cockpit view of this move. So all of the way around the outside, we got very lucky that he actually locked up his brakes. We managed to keep it on track, keep the grip. We make very slight contact there. He's not able to open up his exit nearly as much as we are. So we pull ahead of him going towards the line, 0.1 seconds between the two of us. And we are going to cross it in P2. So another P2 for us. A much more satisfying P2, honestly. Much more satisfying. It was a hard-fought battle uh, all of the way until the end. We got very fortunate with Joey spinning, a couple of other people spinning, um, but it is what it is. You know, somebody told me one time that I wasn't beating them at chess. They were beating themselves, and that's kind of what chess is. It's whoever makes the least mistakes, uh, and that's the same thing for racing. So Joey manages to uh, maintain P4 there. We go green in I rating, red in safety rating, and our lap times were pretty decent as well. Not Nothing like the top top guys but it was good if you guys enjoyed this video and want to support me please check out my channel and some of my other stuff and i bet you will enjoy those as well